David Vando is here with us just now. How are you doing? I am fine. Is it as lovely in the UK as it is here in New York? Uh, pretty much. A little bit cloudy, but it has been really sunny this last week or so and this last couple of months, really. Well, we have to enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you are the writer of this great new film called Hamlet Horatio. So for anyone that hasn't seen it, can you just describe the basic plot of that film, first of all? Okay, it's Hamlet turned on its head. And it's, the story is seen from the point of view of Horatio, yeah. who promises on Hamlet's dying breath to tell Hamlet's story. Yeah. And the concept of the piece is cinematic. It's to take Shakespeare's story out of... Uh, uh, the realm of theatrical uh, film versions uh, and to concentrate on the spiritual level of the text, which is often lost in play versions. And the whole film takes place on a soundstage. Yeah. It opens with uh, a cinematographer all in black with clown white makeup entering and uncovering a, a camera and begins shooting uh, as the uh, work doors open and the crew comes in and starts to load in the sets and so begins the filming of this play done as a, a film. Yeah. And is it quite hard to try and make an adaptation of Hamlet different? Because I suppose it's a very classic piece that's been done many times in the theatre and the film. So did you feel that you sort of had to flip it on its head to make it something special? Well, I didn't do it just, just to be different. Mm. Uh, it, uh, you know... Shakespeare's plays work on many levels, yeah. uh, historical levels, uh, uh, psychological levels, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But the most important one of all is always a spiritual, metaphysical level of the piece. Yeah. And my take is that these two characters are really two aspects of the same soul. Yeah. And that's... That's what I try to do in this film is, is to see the spiritual context and the, the moral context of Shakespeare's play clearly focused on as I could only do in a, in, in a film uh, in an hour and slightly over an hour and a half yeah. to, to force the audience to focus in on an aspect of, of the script that of the story that is not always uh, uh, self-evident mm. and we found the best way to do it was as a film yeah. and uh, we uh, take tell, tell the story from uh, the point of view of Ham the beginning of Hamlet's death yeah. and then it goes back in time and the whole story is, is shot on film before your eyes and I take it then you were involved in the development of the film right from the start rather than being picked as a screenwriter later. Yeah, I, the, the techniques and some of the ideas that I used in the uh, film were based on multiple stage versions of the play that I did with the producer, uh, David Wenzel. Yeah. Uh, I had worked with him on being able to do Hamlet for audiences in New York in a small theater with a small cast, reduced cast. And as we did it, we, we discovered different things. We tried different things. We began with, at the end of the play, with all the dead bodies on the stage and Horatio having the dead Hamlet in his eyes, in his hands, and telling the audience that he, he will tell his story. Yeah. 
and then all the all the dead bodies get up and 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 the scene begins uh you know in in the first court scene yeah uh, and and we discovered things like that this was over 20 years ago hmm. and then i i wrote i decided we can't go any further with this and we're not going to be able to reach larger audiences david if if we just keep doing small productions so hmm. i i i did a tentative uh uh first draft of a screenplay and uh we put it on the shelf and it sort of sat there for a number of years until several years ago david said to me i think it's time to do the film yeah and i said great david but uh i i i don't know whether i want to to, to try and find an, a name actor or you know uh to do this i i'd rather be an ensemble of people that the audience doesn't know mm-hmm. and i want the hamlet to be uh age appropriate a university age student not a 30 or 40 year old major uh, uh acting star and we mm-hmm. want to see him do the, the the role of hamlet no i i wanted a young man to do it yeah. and david said to me but well, that's a great idea but where the hell are you going to find and not to do that. Mm. And I said, well, I think I have just the actor for it. Uh I'm a teacher at the New York Film Academy and I teach Shakespeare there and I had given a scholarship to uh a young actor that I met at the age of 16. Oh. Come to the school. And when he turned 18, he came to the school and he went to the two-year program there, so I got to work with him a lot. Yeah. and i i sent him the real his real of work to the producer and and he he looked at it and he said sign the kid up yeah and that's how we got our hamlet and uh, the whole cast is very young which makes it very appealing to today's audience mm. and uh the film is, is a film you're not going to have to take a dictionary in with you or or, or uh, a thing to understand what's going on or understand the language because in adapting the the play to the screen uh i've taken a number of liberties and uh one of them was to uh change our archaic words which the greater part of the audience would not understand in in the course of the movie yeah and so uh people who are fearful saying oh i don't understand shakespeare the too many words and the, the, the. well that isn't the case in this film yeah it just it just plays just plays and young audiences have been responding to it, 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 it immensely mm. as have people of, of all ages and w- whether you're a shakespeare aficionado as i am uh or not mm. uh it's something for everyone yeah absolutely i did notice that because i watched it with my brother and he was like that's not the right line at certain points so i guess it's a really good thing to put it in understandable language particularly because a lot of shakespeare stuff is in old english and words that we don't really use anymore so Correctly. a lot of people might not really know what sentences mean not only that that the, you miss you miss the, the flow of the text if yeah. you don't understand it mm. but there there are very key moments for example one of the, the, the things that we do which is going to shock some people is that the to be or not to be is really uh, a nightmare sleepwalking scene that hamlet is having in which horatio appears to him in it and the to be or not to be turns out to be a discussion between the two of them yeah and one of the important lines there when they're talking about death and he, he Horatio says the undiscovered country from whose born no creature returns well who knows today what born means yeah but, but when i change it to borders from whose country from whose borders no traveler returns well then you understand it very well don't you mm. yeah it makes it makes perfect sense to you once you cross the border to the land of death there's no crossing back over the border yeah. so it's things like that that we did which i i don't really think uh 
uh, uh, are sacrilege. And if Shakespeare were alive today, he'd probably be doing the same things. Yeah. Including, I believe if Shakespeare were alive today, he'd be writing for film more than the stage. Yeah. Because he, he, he wanted to write for for wide audiences. And uh, uh, that's the most, film is the most popular uh, medium uh, yeah. worldwide today. It's only in some great places like the UK where drama really holds sway as much more than it does in any other country in the world, I think. Yeah, for sure. And even then, film is still more popular in TV as well. But yeah, yeah theatres are still a big part of our culture. Of course. And always will be, yeah. pray to God. Yeah, for sure. And because you'd put on stage shows of Hamlet before, yes. did you perhaps bring in the people who had helped you with that previously to work on the film? No. Ooh. No. No. Entirely different. Yeah. Entirely different. Uh, because of the concept, the, the mm. cinematic co concept, and uh, the use of the, of the young actors as for Hamlet, Horatio, and Ophelia, uh, and of course the Laertes as well. Uh, so uh, no, uh, it, it was a completely fresh cast. With uh, uh, we, we we had to we had to make a team from from the very bottom and build and and build up. Uh, and I think one of the dynamics of the film is that it's not only a young cast, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great team. Mm -hmm. the, the, the actors and all the, all the wonderful people we had, our cinematographer, our costume designer, our makeup yeah. artist. I mean, the, the, they all came. This, this, this was a, a, a labor of love for them because they, they got... Uh, the actors got minimum, a special minimum below uh, scale pay to, to do this. And some of them who weren't in uh, the Screen Actors Guild got paid even, even less. Yeah. So you did this out, out, of, of, out of love. Yeah. And uh, that love sustained us through the difficult moments of doing such a challenging script with very little money and very little time yeah and how much were you involved in the overall process of the film after writing did you get to have a say on how the production of it was done and absolutely the casting? i did absolutely i did because i conceived this whole idea of, of what it amounts to a, a film within a film within a film yeah uh shakespeare's play is a a play within a play within a play, mm. and my film is a, a, a film within a film and within a film. Yeah, and that was all conceived by the uh, producer David Wenzel and I, who, in the stage versions, played Hamlet himself. Wow! So he's quite a talent, and he knows yeah. the script backwards and forwards and back again. Mm. Uh, so we conceived the whole concept, and then I took ran away with it and I made it, uh, you know, on the sound stage and uh, uh, took it for, uh, from there. And as a matter of fact, uh, sort of at the last minute, we, we lost several of our actors. And as, as a result, uh, David Wenzel, the producer, uh, played Lucentius, the, uh, Lucianus, the, uh, the within the play, within the play sequence, uh, the, the Poisoner. Mm -hmm. And I played the cinematographer who is a pantomime role mm -hmm. that uh, uh, sets up the whole film and, and, and appears throughout and closes the film. But I also, in the same expressionistic white makeup, play the grave digger in the grave digger mm -hmm. uh, scene. So mm -hmm. I, I not only help produce it. I, I wrote it and I conceived the, 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 the film with David Wenzel and I ended up, ended up acting in it as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite good. You're a movie star. Yeah, now I'm a movie star. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So how did you first start to get into the whole idea of putting on plays and writing things? When I was in what we call high school here in New York, yeah. I mean, in, in the US, um, I, but even before that, when I was still a teenager, a friend of mine, about 12 or 13 years old, a friend of mine said, hey, would you like to see a matinee with me tonight? I, uh, the next Saturday, I have a, a, a ticket. Mm. Sure, what is it? It's Shakespeare. Okay, I'll go. And I, I, and I did. And it was a production of Twelfth Night. Yeah. I had never read any of Shakespeare's plays at that point. I knew who Shakespeare was, of course. And... I sat down and it began with an actor playing a lute and singing a, like a, a prologue. Well, that really got me because I love music and I love to sing and everything. <laughs> and, and then it just, I was just pulled into the whole drama. And, and mm. as I listened closely, I said, I, I, I've heard that expression before. I, 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 I've heard that turn of phrase before. You mean? I've been quoting Shakespeare all my life, and I didn't know it? Well, yes, I had. We all have. <laughs> well, I fell in love with Shakespeare, that matinee performance, and I've never looked back. Oh, yeah. Well, if we're interested in having a watch of this film, where are we able to find it everywhere? Well, currently, uh, I'm... It, it just was launched a week and a half ago, so I'm I'm not quite sure uh, what's working in, in in the UK. But I know that it, it, it's one of the best places to see it is on Amazon. Yes. Uh, it's also on Google Play, YouTube, uh, iTunes, and Apple TV. Yeah. Uh, it will be shortly, I say shortly, I hope, on Voodoo and on AMC for pay. Yeah. Uh, they were supposed to have been online by now, but because of the pandemic in, in the U.S. is, is receding, uh, now all the Hollywood movies are, are, are pushing to get on, on, online. Uh -huh. And so independent films like, Ours have had to take a back seat while they accommodate the Hollywood films. Ah. Um, but uh, I, I would say that uh, other, of, of the platforms I mentioned to you, yeah. uh, Amazon is probably the most accessible, mm. uh, I would think. Yes. And Amazon is what works here. That's where I watched it. I don't think I could find it on YouTube or Google Play, but Amazon, it was there for three ninety nine. I think is the cheapest you can rent it, which is a good price. Yeah, I think it's it's an excellent price. I I, I don't know whether I'll, we will make our money back. I'm hoping it, it will. We we will. But even if we don't, I don't care because this has been a a, a labor of love. Uh, and it has, it's not a love's labor's lost, I don't think. Uh, and uh, uh, that, that's more in, in important to, to all of us, that a wide audience gets to see and experience uh, this rather unique film. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today. It's been great to have you here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I enjoyed it uh, immensely. And... Uh, uh, I appreciate you supporting the film.